All right, well, good evening. My name is Chris Rowena, Communications Analyst at Health Workforce Development. We're excited that you've joined us today for the Community Health Workers, Promotores, and Representatives Informational Webinar. Tonight's webinar is presenting information for practicing community health workers, promotores, and representatives. If you're representing a training program, we ask that you reference the webinar we hosted today at 10 a.m. The recording for that one will be posted on our website in seven to 10 days. Before we begin, I would like to discuss a few housekeeping items. Number one, the webinar will be recorded and posted on our website in approximately seven to 10 business today's. Tonight, we will be leaving the chat option open throughout the webinar for you to ask clarifying questions. We have several times <laughs> during the webinar that we will stop and answer your questions. Out of respect for the limited time that we have tonight, we ask that you only ask clarifying questions during the webinar. If you have comments regarding the program, please email them to chw at hci.ca.gov. And then lastly, the slide deck will be posted on our website within that 7 to 10 business day period. And we will have a link within uh, our chat box um, posted here shortly. And with that, I am thrilled to introduce our first presenter, Jolanda Granville. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Jolanda Granville. I'm the policy section chief for um, the Department of Healthcare Access and Information Office of Health Workforce Development. And I'm glad to be in a, been a part of this process and um, look forward to sharing with you all uh, more information today. Here's the agenda. We'll um, do welcome, obviously, and uh, we'll discuss the meeting purpose. I will provide an overview of HKI's guiding principles and stakeholder engagement process. I'll also share with you our finalized CHW certificate model. We'll discuss next steps. And as Chris stated, there will be opportunities for Q&A. So the meeting purpose, this session is intended for uh, CHWPRs. Uh, we will present the finalized CHWPR certificate model as released in the July 1 guidance letter. And there will be, uh, I think, a link to the guidance letter also included um, probably in the chat. We'll highlight relevant information for the CHWPRs that are interested in applying for our certificate. And CHWPRs will be asked, um, will be able to ask any clarifying questions that you may have um, on our finalized model. So here's an overview of HKI's guiding principles and our stakeholder engagement process. HKI's guiding principles for the development of the CHWPR certificate model. HKI is committed to ensuring that the certificate process aligns with the DHCS CHW SPA and the HKI statute. HKI is committed to being highly responsive to stakeholders. HKI is committed to centering the voices of community health workers, promotoras, and Torres, and representatives. When making final decisions for the model, HKI considered every opinion voiced through comments, chat, email feedback, and poll data provided to us through stakeholder feedback sessions and our CHWPR email inbox. The decision points in the final model are based on the majority opinion vote. Here is a summary of our stakeholder engagement. This occurred from December 2022 through May 2023. Uh, HKI worked with stakeholders to develop the standards for our state issued certificate for CHWPRs and for approval of training programs. Our stakeholder began with phase one in December 2022. We completed 41 one on one interviews with 26 stakeholder organizations to inform the topics and questions for the next phase of stakeholder engagement. On, in phase two, we um, we moved into our um, stake, actual stakeholder engagement, which included a round one of listening sessions um, from, from the month of January and through the beginning of February, consisted of 13 sessions, 141 in attendance, including uh, a tribal partner session, an English and a Spanish sessions um, 
specifically designated for active CHWPRs. Round two listening sessions were from February 13th through February 17th, consisted of 10 sessions with 301 people in attendance. That also included a tribal partner session and English and Spanish sessions specifically designated for active CHWPRs. We also conducted round one info sessions from February 22nd 27th, excuse me, to March 3rd. There were three sessions with 228 in attendance and all sessions provided live Spanish translation. Our round three listening sessions were conducted from March 13th through March 17th. There were six sessions, 176 in attendance, including a tribal partner session and again in English and Spanish sessions specifically designated for active CHWPRs. Then we moved on to our in-person listening events from March 20th through April 25th, including seven sessions, 242 people in attendance. Those sessions, those in-person sessions were held in Stockton, Salinas, Eureka, San Diego, San Bernardino, Los Angeles, and Oakland. All of these sessions provided live Spanish translation. Okay. Round two info sessions were from May 24th through the 26th. There were four sessions with 485 in attendance, three sessions with live Spanish translation, and one session was in Spanish. So based on that stakeholder engagement, we finalized our CHW PR certificate model. The state issued CHW PR certificate indicates that a CHW PR meets the requirements to bill for Medi-Cal CHW PR services. CHWPRs can continue to work without the state CHWPR certificate. There are two pathways to state CHWPR certificate. There's a CHWPR experience pathway, it's previously known as the legacy pathway, and there is a training program pathway. CHWPRs will apply for the state CHWPR certificate online after meeting either the training program pathway or CHWPR experience pathway requirements. Once a CHWPR receives a certificate, they must renew that state CHWPR certificate every two years. CHWPRs will apply for renewal online after completing the continuing education requirements. An optional add-on to, to the state CHWPR certificate, both for the training program pathway and CHWPR experience pathway is being offered. It's not required to bill Medi-Cal for Medi-Cal reimbursable CHPR services. CHWPRs will apply for the state specialty certificate online after meeting the state specialty certificate requirements. HCI will not collect or require a social security number or proof of immigration status. It should also be noted that HCI will allow individuals 16 years and older to apply, but we'd like to let Make sure that everyone is aware that Medi-Cal billing has a minimum age requirement of 18. I'm going to discuss next the CHW experience pathway, previously known as the legacy pathway. The requirements for the state issued CHWPR certificate, CHWPR experience pathway are as follows. A self-attestation of lived experience, 
the CHWPR will attest that they will provide CHWPR services with individuals, communities, or populations that align with their lived experience. Lived experience can be personal knowledge of a specific health condition or circumstance, or part of someone's self-identity, such as a member of a race, ethnic community, or the LGBTQ plus community. Um, and a draft example of a self of this self attestation process is on our next slide. The other requirement is a submission of one of the following: 2,000 hours, 500, which must be verified of CHWPR work as a volunteer or employee, or a prior certificate of completion dated 2019 or later from an HKI approved training program and proof of at least 10 hours of field experience and a draft example of the field experience ver verification form is also on a future slide. There is some additional new information regarding the CHWPR experience pathway. HKI has revised the name from legacy pathway to the CHWPR experience pathway for better clarity. HKI has added a reciprocity policy and a discretion policy. More information will be available on an upcoming slide about that as well. HKI will close the CHWPR experience pathway in 2029, but the, reci the reciprocity and discretion policy will continue indefinitely. HKI may revisit the decision to close the CHWPR experience pathway if application volume remains significant as we approach 2029. The self-attestation self of lived experience uh, is defined as an official verification of someone as true or authentic. Self-attesting a document allows an individual to verify the document themselves without the help of an outside party. When CHWPRs apply online to receive the CHWPR certificate, they will self-attest to a statement describing their lived experience. And uh, as you see on this slide, there is an initial draft um, that we are considering for you to see um, as an example of what that self-attestation of lived experience would look like. And here are illustrative draft examples of potential verification forms. So for the 500 hours um, plus the core competencies, um, this the that's the form on the left. And then also, sorry, um, the Form on the right is a verification form for the 10 hours of field experience. And as you will see, you complete the form and that form needs to be signed by an employer or a volunteer supervisor um, and dated. Slide. The reciprocity policy, CHWPRs coming from another state or country must meet the following requirements to obtain a California issued CHWPR certificate. One, the self-attestation of lived experience, and two, submit a certificate of completion from a CHWPR training program from another state or country demonstrating that they have completed a training to work as a CHWPR. And the certificate of completion must have been issued no later than five years from the application date. Lastly, submit a proof of completing at least 10 hours of field experience supervised by CHWPR work in the field. And this policy will remain indefinitely, the recipro reciprocity uh, policy. For the state issued CHWPR certificate, HKI has a discretion policy. Discretion means that HKI will maintain the freedom to decide what should be done in situations where an existing CHWPR cannot meet the requirements for the CHWPR experience pathway or reciprocity policy for reasons beyond their control. HKI, at its discretion, We'll review information, including but not limited to personal statements, 
testimonials, and evidence of CHWPR work performed that will be submitted by the CHWPR. At its discretion, HCI will consider whether to award a state-issued CHWPR certificate to the individual based on their unique circumstances and the information they offer to demonstrate they possess the core competencies to work as a CHWPR. This policy will also remain in effect indefinitely. So, we're going to pause here for um, any clarifying questions regarding specifically the CHWPR experience pathway. We'll talk more about, we'll talk about the training pathway next, but during this section, we just want to hear um, questions about the experience pathway. All right, and as uh, the way our question and answer sessions will work is uh, we have enabled audio. And so you can unmute yourself if you're called on, raise your hand, uh, and uh, we will call on you in the order that uh, hands are raised. So our first question comes from Carol West. Um, thank you. This is it's a very exciting. It feels like we're kind of getting to the end um, of this process. I really appreciate all the effort that's been put in by everybody. Uh, one of the questions that I have is around um, any appeal process. So if a community health worker applies to be certified and they are denied for whatever reason, is there an appeal process and are there remediation steps that they can take then to reapply? So if a CHW were to apply, well, we have we have the requirements. So are the only way that they wouldn't be um, approved for a certificate is if they didn't meet one of the requirements. So if they complete the requirement, so if they say you are missing X, Y, and Z, whatever that is, if is there a process for them to go away, complete X, Y, and Z, and come back and reapply and get approved? Yes. Okay. Yes, awesome. of course. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you, Carol. Next question will be from Caroline Lee. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, yes. Oh, okay, okay. So I had a question. So for the experience pathway, one way was, um, I think it was 2,000 hours. Mm -hmm. And then verification, 500 hours. Yes. And then, um, so can I use a past um, community health worker position? that I had like 2000 hours and stuff. Yes. And then for the 500 hours, because it was my past work, I just like uh, reach out to my um, previous um, supervisor and they could verify. Yes. And then um, was I forgot, but part of that was because it was uh, the 2000 hours was all field work. Chris, would you mind going back to the uh, slide? Uh, with the hours requirement. Yeah, Alma will uh, or, we'll move or that Alma. back. Yep. Yep. Oh, I meant like 2,000 hours for me was field work. So I think that qualified. I forgot if yeah. the 10 hours was the second option, which was the yeah. certificate. Yeah, I was I was trying to get them to go back just so we could have have clarification but um it looks like we might be having some issues with the um with the slide deck but yes only 500 hours need to be verified and if they were all field work that's fine um what was the yeah, was um like, what was the qualification if it wasn't field work for that 2000 hours what was the qualification was for the field 10 out 10 hours of field work oh i thought that was the second option for the experience pathway I don't remember. Sorry. Can I, yeah, that's why I wanted to see this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, it doesn't look like we're able to get back there. Um, let me. Oh, I can move it. I can. I've got it. So your experience CHW, um, you must submit proof of completing at least 10 hours of field experience. And it sounds like you have that. Yolanda, which slide do you need me to move to? Um, 
I need you at slide, slide. 10. Yes, yeah, slide 10, 10 hours of field experience. Is required. Is that was that answering your question? It sounds like you have way more than 10 hours of field experience. Oh, but I thought that was or. So if I qualified for the 2000 hours, I don't even need field work for that one. Correct. Oh, OK, just only 500. But you would need. Yeah, you would need 500 of those hours verified. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Hopefully that was help someone else, too. That is a little bit. Oh, sorry. Now. I had another question. Oh, OK. Um, so I did um, get a certificate for uh, at a community health worker academy. How do uh -huh. I find out if it's HKI approved? We um we haven't started approving training programs as of yet. That won't start until um, sometime this fall. And then we'll have a list of approved training programs posted by early 2024. So it could be like past because I got the certificate, uh, CHW certificate in 2021, and that past slide said prior of 2019 or something. 19. So yes. it could be like the proof could be like from past. Correct. OK, thank yeah, you. So if you if you if you're the training program that you received your certificate of completion from is on the list of HKI approved training program. Then that would provide you with it. Um, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the qualifi qual qualifications that you would require. You're welcome. All right, great questions. Next question really is, questions. yeah, Lita Albright. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My question is regarding your comment about people coming from other countries and needing a certificate. So just need a little bit of clarity. You said, I believe it was they they had to have training and the hours from outside the country or could they have training and come here and then get those hours so the reciprocity which is my favorite word of the day <laughs> policy <laughs> is that um the the chwpr must meet the following requirements uh, a self-attestation of lived experience they must submit a certificate of completion from a training program from that other state or country demonstrating that they've completed that training as a CHWPR. And that certificate of completion must have been issued no earlier than five years from the application date. And they also must submit a proof of, submit proof of completing at least 10 hours of field experience. Okay, and that was, that was my question. Um, so the assumption is if they've completed the training, they already have the field work that's built into the training. That's not an assumption. There exactly. needs they must submit proof. Well, yes, I'm, yes. But if what if they did not have? They did the training, but they haven't done those hours. They came here with the certificate, but all they need to do is complete ten hours. Could they come to an organization here, get those ten hours, submit their prior training certificate with the ten hours as well? I think what we want to do with kind of individual cases is we want them to go ahead and submit an application and will allow us to use our discretion policy. OK, all right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you, Lita. Next question is from Margarita. Uh, yes, hi, thank you for taking my question. So my question is about the training programs prior to from 2019 on. So for example, if there's a training that then requests to be certified, you will allow that if they complete it after 2019. The question is, does it have to be the 80 hours? Can you repeat that question? I'm sorry, I didn't quite uh, catch the, it. <clears throat> Sorry. The training that can be taken prior to the certification process and submitted for approval, which would be a training that is later approved, right? So if I do a training right. and I submit it for training and it's approved, then someone who I trained in 2022 would be able to submit that as a proof of their training. But does that training need to be the 80 hours since we didn't have that mandate before? It would not need to be the 80 hours. It would just need to be a program that is, is an approved training program by by HKI, which would have an 80 hour requirement 
when they are approved. Uh, okay. So, let, I, I'm, I'm sorry, you said no, it doesn't have to be 80 hours, but it would have to be 80 hours to get approved. The requirement, the requirement that you're referring to is if you've completed an HCI approved training program prior to us approving them, if they're on our approved list and you're applying to for a certificate, then that would meet the, the um, requirements for to be approved for a certificate because that training program is on our approved training list. OK, thank you. You're welcome. And Elia, feel free to chime in if that's not correct. I'm sorry, I, I was um, answering a question Other in the questions. chat. Yeah. Training programs that have existed previously that are approved and on HKI's approved training list, but their programs were less than 80 hours prior yeah. to being approved, yeah. they would still be approved for a certificate if they attend if they were have a certificate from one of those programs yeah what what i put in the chat is honestly the, the that question came up for the first time for us yesterday and today so we are um looking at how we're going to honor those certificates that were from programs that had the the lower hours before there was a state standard required so we're going to definitely take take that back and take full consideration of that but our intent is to honor those, but we're just gonna think about how we can do that. Thank you, Elia. Thank you. All right, thank you. And we have another question from Carol West. Um, I think it's kind of tied in a little bit to what we're talking about right now. Um, if, an, if a training program is not approved, so if you're a community health worker that has a previous training, can you put the training that's not approved as part of your hours to go through the legacy pathway? Because I'm assuming that if the program that you went through is unfortunate enough not to be approved, can you still count that as hours of experience? The experience pathway is is not a training pathway. So let, let me just look at the, you have to have the self-attestation, obviously, and then 2,000 hours of work, not training, 500 of which needs to would need to be verified. Would, would there be room through the discernment process to potentially consider someone who's, say, if you've done you know, a significant amount of training through one organization or another. Um, I guess it's really just framing that as experience or are you just going to say no to that? Well, looking at the, the requirement, it does say 2,000 hours, 500 of which must be verified of a CHWPR's work as a volunteer or employees. So if they're in that training program, there's a way to verify that 500 hours were spent either volunteering or as an employee performing those services. That. So it's a maybe, a depends. It's, it, it's a depends. <laughs> <laughs> OK. OK, it might be there may be some but training hours are obviously training hours aren't included there. It doesn't say, you know, 500 hours of training. But we can definitely uh, move over into the training um, pathway. We can we can discuss that. So um, if folks want to determine which one would be um, the best path for them, we'll definitely um, be discussing the training pathway. Is there are there any other questions about the experience pathway? Right. 2019 or later is for the experience pathway. So that means 2019, 2020, 2021, right? I is that the correct? Tail end of that question. Johnny, can you repeat that question for us, please? Oh dear. 
Okay, maybe. No, I can't hear. Maybe it wasn't. Was it for us? Yeah, Strange. it was. It was. It's Johnny speaking. Correct. I'll unmute. Why don't you put your question in the chat and we'll go ahead and move on to the training pathway. That's OK. Sounds All like right. she's having some technical difficulties. Yep. All the right. training pathway. It's a great segue, that last question. So what's our training pathway look like? Um, I wish I could move these boxes. OK. So the requirements for the training pathway are as follows. Again, a self-attestation of lived experience. The CHWPR attests that they will provide CHWPR services with individuals, communities, or populations that align with their lived experience. And lived experience can be, again, personal knowledge of a specific health condition or circumstance or part of someone's self-identity, such as a member of a race or ethnic community or the LGBTQ plus community. The other requirement is, com is a completion of an HCI approved training program, which will provide at least 80 hours of training. The 80 hours must include 10 hours of field experience, and we'll show a little bit more about that in the next slide. The curriculum um, must teach two core competencies adopted from the C3 core competencies, and that the list of those C3 competencies are um, on a future slide. They're, they will have a training team that includes at least one CHWPR as a trainer, co-trainer, or other member of the training team. They uh, conduct an assessment of the core competencies at the end of the training. And they support uh, uh, CHWPRs in their application to the cert to us, HCI, the certifying entity, to uh, receive that state CHWPR certificate that we're providing. So here is a diagram, um, additional details about the training hours versus the field experience training hours. The field experience training hours are defined as supervised hours in the field, training as a CHWPR. The training programs are required to offer the field experience training hours. However, if a trainee chooses, they can complete their field experience hours through their employer. Field experience hours may be unpaid unless provided by the CHWPR's current employer. The minimum of 10 hours of field experience will be completed within the minimum of 80 hours of training. And here are the core competencies for the training programs. Um, HCI approved training programs will provide curriculum that teaches to the following core competencies, communication skills, interpersonal relationship building skills, service coordination and navigation skills, capacity building skills, advocacy, education and facilitation skills, individual and communication assessment skills, outreach skills, professional skills and conduct, evaluation and research skills, knowledge base, basic knowledge and public health principles and social determinants of health as determined by the supervising provider. So with that, any clarifying questions about the training pathway? All right, we're going to go to our first question for this one, uh, Rebecca Ryan. Hi, thank you so much for hosting this. The other one earlier today was fantastic, and I really appreciate you taking the time to take our questions. Um, I'm very yeah. aware of the, C, the C3 core competencies. They are fantastic and a really guiding force for most of our training programs at the community college level. However, one of the um, core competencies, which is the research and evaluation core competency, even though the sub skills are listed on the PDF that you provided, it is very clear, um, for example, I am trained in a PhD program, research trained, and I understand that research and evaluation tends to be a master's, if not a doctoral level um, kind of curriculum, if you will. And so I'm a little bit concerned about training programs and CHWs when it comes to that particular core competency, because even looking at the subskills, 
those require an enormous amount of training. So is it possible to get an example of some of the um, tasks that may be performed by CHWs or the training that may be performed by CHWs that would fulfill this specific skill that are really um, appropriate for a CHW program that's not an AA degree, not a bachelor's, not a master's, and definitely not a PhD level? Thank you for that um, request, and we'll definitely take that back. I think that's a reasonable request and, and consider how we might incorporate that into um, our instructions for training program applications. Thank you so much. We do want to uh, make sure that we uh, focus specifically on the CHWPR um, and ra rather than the um, training programs in this particular session, but we definitely do appreciate that. Um, that request and that question and concern, and we'll, we'll take that back. If anyone else has any questions or comments specific to training programs, um, we would ask for you to hold those questions, um, and if possible, we'll try to ask, answer those questions at the very end. Any more CHWPR questions about their training pathway option? All right, looks like our next question is from Margarita. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't lower my hand. Oh, oh. this is another Margarita, I think. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yes. Hi. Yes. Um, concerning the the um, the cost of the at this point of the proposal, do we have approximate cost for this training? for those that we don't qualify for the 2,000 hours? Thank you for your question. We are looking at ways in which we can keep the cost of the training programs uh, nominal or free, but we, um, we're we still working on, on how we might go about doing that. OK. OK. So, Talanda, if I can provide Thank a you. little bit, if I can just sure. provide a little Absolutely. bit more of context to that. Absolutely. So, so we have we have received some funding this year. It's it's a small amount. We're expecting to receive significantly more in the next few up fiscal years. Those funds in part are going to be dedicated to us trying to create opportunities for a low cost and free training, as Jolanda was mentioning. And um, the only other thing that I was going to mention is we as part of our application process, we are asking training programs what they charge for their training programs. That's part of the approval process. And we will be making that information public. We will be posting it on our website. So um, community health workers, promotoras, representatives will have that information on hand. So I just wanted to make those couple of clarifications. Thank you, That's good. Excellent, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Margarita. And the next question is from Jose. Hello, Jose. So the question that I had was, uh, where exactly can someone go to obtain this training, this HI approved training? We are in the process of uh, developing our application for training programs at this time. We hope to have that um, available in the fall of this year. And once we have approved training programs, uh, our plan is to provide a list at the beginning of 2024 where you will be able to see all of the HKI approved training programs uh, and where they're located. All right, so with that said, I had a question. I have a colleague of mine that went to, uh, I believe it was Pierce College and they received a certificate as a community health worker. And they were wondering if that would be suffice uh, for them uh, to qualify. Then a question that I have. Uh, so I've been working as a community health worker. I have like above 3000 hours. And then I'm also a certified uh, peer support tech. I'm also a registered alcohol and drug abuse technician and a substance use disorder counselor. One, uh, would any of that assist me or qualify towards my uh, becoming a certified community health worker? So it sounds to me like you would be interested in moving through the experience pathway. Right. And the 
and the requirements there are 2,000 hours, 500 hours working as a CH with doing CHW PR work as either a volunteer or an employee. So if you were, if you if you have uh, the ability to verify or have verified 500 of those hours that you um, have, uh, then it sounds like you would meet the qualifications for the experience pathway to receive a certificate along with, of course, your self-attestation of lived experience. And that was on slide number 10, if you want to re refer back to it. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I joined late. I got I oh. got off late from work. I'm okay. sorry. Oh, no problem. And um, I think we're able to put the presentation in the chat. And it is also available on our website, which I also believe um, we'll be able to, to place in the chat. Do you have access to the chat? Uh, yes, I do. OK, all right. And then in terms of your um, friend who uh, was trained at a, a Pierce, Pierce College, College. I, you think yeah. you said? I'm, I'm not familiar with that college specifically, but um, they would have to look at the requirements for the experience pathway versus the training pathway in order to determine if um, which pathway would be most appropriate for them, assuming if they've been trained that they also have some experience as well. All right, so when one last question, when, uh, when will it be absolutely necessary for anybody that works uh, for an organization as a CHW to be registered or, or certified of sorts? The certificate is provided as a means for uh, billing Medi-Cal, and it's based on the language that came out of the DHCS CHW SPA. And so yeah. it is not a requirement for providing providing CHWPR services. It is a requirement for, or it is part of the requirement for billing Medi-Cal. Oh, I was under the impression that in order to work anywhere as a CHW in California that this was uh, something that we had to uh, we had to obtain that is not that is not correct it is not all required right. all right <laughs> thanks so much you're welcome all right thank you Jose next question is for Maribel oh there we go hi colegas yes I just had Hello. um Hi. Okay. Um, I have a question about the, the training pathway and the hours. I, I quickly wanted to comment on the cost question since I know that's come up in all of the meetings. Strongly want to emphasize the no cost piece, um, especially since this is a workforce that sometimes works volunteer or at no stipends. And the training entities that will likely be approved have also been offering their own certificates and training. Um, but regarding the training piece, I want to ask you all to speak on why did you all do 80 hours versus 10 hours um, for the 80 hours of experience and 10 hours of um, working Get out. in the field? Get out. Don't come back in here. With the community, um, especially since CHWPRs tend to be community-based. Can you speak a little bit to that? And especially since we've heard from many of the training entities that will likely be approved, that their training programs that they've done for years have been less than those 80 hours. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about the rationale. Thank you for your question. The rationale um, is, is kind of as was presented earlier in the in the presentation, we had the input of in various um, phases from hundreds of stakeholders, one on one meetings, info sessions, listening sessions, um, in-person live sessions, and we received a lot of feedback about the hours and some wanted more, some wanted less, and we found found that 80 hours was kind of that sweet spot with the 10 hours of required field experience. But again, that is not limited to 10 hours in training programs that desire to provide more than 10 hours of experience. We, we are, are completely in support of that as well. Thank you. It would be great if we could get access to some of that data and information, especially since we've heard from some of the training entities that you likely will approve of, of those hours potentially being a barrier. And since CHWPRs tend to be uh, community-based, but I, I understand there's so much data to process. So thank you. 
No, I, I appreciate your question. And I think I want to make sure that I'm, I'm clear that of those 80 hours of, of required training, a minimum of 10 hours are required of field experience, but that could go all the way up to 80 hours. And if they wanted to offer more than 80 hours of field experience, that's also OK as well. But we just want to make sure there's the 80 hours is there. As a minimum of uh, amount of training hours, does that does that answer your question? A little bit better. Yes, and I, I want to clarify because I think this was brought up in the previous um, session. So a promotora cannot can't do. 20 hours field experience and then 60 hours or sorry, 70 hours training experience, right? It has to be 80 no matter what and then anything else 10 plus in field experience. Correct. They must. Yeah, they, they, we must. Uh, the promotor must complete at least hours of field experience, and we require a minimum of 80 hours of training total field experience yeah. and in class experience. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. I was just clarifying of, of why the the training experience hours we're, we're so much higher than the infield experience for a workforce that tends to be community based. And especially since vetted training ent entities have done 50 hours or 60 hours. So that was, but, but thank you for clarifying. Yeah, we, we wanted to make sure it was inclusive. And so we provided that minimum of 10 hours and welcome programs to design their programs for more than, than 10 hours of field experience as they see appropriate, but we wanted to make sure that there was the 80 hours total was was there as well. All right, thank you, Maribel. Uh, next question is from uh, Kristen. I just wanted to um, add something also because I know again we all go back to cost is that um, there are, you know, to keep in mind that, um, especially even with our community college consortium, that we have free tuition, basic needs, EOPS, financial aid, um, you know, so we have all of these programs actually set up. So that is, you know, um, to make it much more to, you know, to, um, to help with those uh, concerns. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. All right, thank you, Kristen. Uh, next question is from Johnny. about um, going back to the verification form um, in terms of competencies. And um, I'm just wondering, like, around the employer supervisor, does, does that employer supervisor have to be trained as a CHWT for them to be able to state and assess that they even understand all 61 skills of those 11 competencies? So I'm assuming the employer supervisor has to have their own training to be able to then say, yes, this person ver has these 500 hours verified. Um, so I just wanted to ask about that because it's 61 skills and if it's like new to folks and a, an employer supervisor is needing to sign off, then wouldn't they need that that knowledge themselves? So I'm just kind of wondering about that. And you, oh, the second part is, do you have any like sample questions of self assess or self assessment or supervision's assessment that can help? Because it, it seems like there's a wide interpretation of the 11 competencies. Um, I'm just wondering if there's more like technical assistance that might be provided later or toolkits on that for like how do you how do you assess as an employer supervisor on these 11 competencies? It's kind of um, yeah, if there's examples of that. Thank you for your comment and question. So the first answer to your first question, uh, we don't have any um, requirements for employers or supervisors at this time in terms of additional information, uh, supplemental information for employers or supervisors um, attesting to the core competencies. Um, having something that we can provide. We do not have this time, but that's something that we'll make note of um, and consider for uh, part of our technical assistance. Thank you. All right, You're thank welcome. you, Johnny. 
And uh, we've got time for one more question during this session, and we will have more time for questions uh, at the end. Javier. Javier, are you um, with us? Yes, I'm here. I'm sorry, I was Hi. reading the slides. Um, <laughs> so I was late, but my question is, um, so I already finished the training program. So are you guys the entity who will be providing the state certificate? It's yes, we are. OK, so then yeah, I just wanted to double check on that. So once um, since I already finished the, the training, I, I think we did more than 80 hours of school. Uh, we okay. haven't done the we haven't done the um, field work because I think uh, they were not sure what the state will decide on the hour time, how many okay. hours to be. Um, so when to, uh, once I finish the, the hours, when can we start applying for the for the state certificate? It, it's the, the certificate um, application process is scheduled to begin in early 2024. Oh, OK, so you guys don't have a date. Um, yet established we don't have an exact date yet oh, okay all right but once uh, we have all the um but you also mentioned something about that the school or the training uh facility needs to be um it needs to be in one of your lists or approved approved by by you guys how do we go about and find out to see if the college that i want is approved yeah yes of course so at the beginning of in fall 2023, we plan on rolling out an application process for training programs. We'll review those applications and we'll approve training programs. Those programs will be listed on our website for applicants to see in early 2024. Oh, okay, got it. All right, thank you, Javier. Okay. Thank you, Javier. Good luck. Bye. And at this time, uh, we are going to move on uh, in the interest of time, making sure we get through all of the content uh, tonight. Uh, again, we will have more opportunities for questions uh, at the end. Thank you. Okay, so we've done the clarifying with questions for the training pathway, and I think next up is the renewal model. Yes, renewal model. CHWPRs who are have who hold a certificate must renew their state CHWPR certificate every two years. CHWPRs must complete six hours each year of continuing education from an approved an HCI approved training program or employer volunteer site. And a draft example of the verification form is on the next slide. Training programs must provide support for CHWPRs applying for renewal of their state CHWPR certificate. Acceptable topics for continuing education hours are core competency topics, updates on applicable laws, um, including changes to Medi-Cal eligibility and evidence-based practices, and HCI approved specialty training program hours can also be uh, are also acceptable topics for that continuing education hours. Here is a draft example of potential of a potential verification form, which would include um, hours of continuing education completed in the year, um, any continuing uh, education uh, provided in the areas of for uh, with check boxes and of course um, a supervisor's uh, name and signature. Any questions about the renewal model? All right, let me enable microphones here and then. First question is Carol West. Hi, Carol. Hi there. So um, yeah, my concern really is still around um, limiting the CEUs to agencies that are have been approved by HCI. Um, you know, one of the things personally as a community health worker, a lot of my continuing education comes from the National Association of Community Health Workers, their webinars, and now 
Envision uh, Equity is the uh, technical assistance uh, group to the t uh, CDC 2109 grantees. Uh, California got seven of those grants that were you know, multi-million dollar grants. Um, so they're very well organized and have a lot of infrastructure and resources. So still feeling very concerned that CEUs are going to be limited only to accredited training programs, because I think there is a rich, rich opportunities for people to get continuing education um, in a lot of different arenas that would really enhance the C3 core skills and competencies and a lot of the policy issues. Um, I mean, CPEN, for instance, and I think we do have Andrea Mackey here today, they have been doing incredible work around community health worker policy and attending one of their webinars, which would be maybe an hour and a half, uh, you know, could go a substantial way to, uh, you know, getting skills that I think would be very much in line with in enhancing a community health worker's ability to understand their workforce. Um, and um, so, yeah, just so hoping that it, maybe if it's not now, then sometime in the near future that there is uh, some consideration for expanding who can offer CEUs and which CEUs would be approved. Um, Thank you for your comment. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Next question is from Rebecca Ryan. Hi, thank you so much. Um, there, so I do have a question, but first, um, there's been a couple things in the chat. I think I just want to clarify and make sure, I guess this is a question. Um, some people are on this call as CHWs who do not work and will not work and have no desire to work in a Medi-Cal space where the billing will occur. Um, okay. First, after I finish my question, can you guys clarify that CHWs working in a community-based organization or any place that does not require um, a certificate because they're not billing, they actually don't have to get a certificate, right? They don't have to go that's through correct. the process. They so do they not. Don't. Yeah, and I think that's really important because like Maribel said, and I really think her comment was important, that there are people working in the space and that training hours may be too much for them, but they may not also be the population that needs to get a certificate. So it's not like CHWs, everyone in the state that is a CHW will have to get a certificate. And I think it's important to recognize that because I don't want CHWs to think limited. Um, the question that I have that also came in the chat is, um, I have two. First, is there a cost for the application for CHWs or even for the renewal? It's my understanding there's no cost to um, for the certificate and for the renewal at this time. Okay, great. And then the question I have next, my last final question, thank you guys so much for your patience as I get through my <laughs> questions, is let's say a CHW is, they got their certificate, they're excited, and C3, the organization that has all these competencies, has a wonderful conference and they're so excited to go. Based on the, the requirements for renewal, they actually would not get any credit for the renewal going to the C3 conference because C3 is not a training organization. So this is where I think Carol's comment comes in. Maybe there's a way that we can work to um, expand beyond employers and beyond training programs to make um, make it possible for other entities to host events where our CHWs could go and get the renewal. Is that like a conversation that can potentially happen? Absolutely. We'll definitely take that back and, and consider how we might be able to have further conversation about that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you, Rebecca. Next uh, questions from Valerie Edwards. Valerie, are you with us? I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, I Valerie. Made, I made it. I unmuted. Welcome. So this is, thank you. Um, this is a question about evaluation, which I know is down the road, but I mentioned as you're preparing the, the um, aspects around training. Um, are, is there a plan to um, evaluate the training programs, um, particularly for their um, ability to retain the kind of community health workers that the Medi-Cal employers say they need as a way of 
looking at things like the 80 hours, the 10 hours, um, whether or not that's adequate, um, not enough, too much, if the programs are recruiting the kind of people that are, uh, that the Medi-Cal population needs in their uh, as part of their service delivery. If you have if you have um, any plans around what you're measuring in your evaluation of the programs. A very great, a good question. Um, and that's something that we will look at as we move forward with the process. Right now, we're we're uh, focusing on rolling out our initial uh, application process and, and, and getting training programs online and we'll definitely be evaluating the effectiveness of our of all of our initiatives as we move forward. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you. Next question is from Aliyah Enriquez. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, we have you, Aliyah. Okay, um, I just want to make sure that I understand where I, I am at. So I am not a certified um, CHW, but I have worked over 2,000 hours of um, CHW work and as a certified enrollment counselor doing Medi-Cal applications. Um, so I will qualify for the experience pathway and be able to get that certificate early 2024. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. That was You're my last one. Sure. That was easy. <laughs> Thank you for your service. All right. Are there any other questions regarding the renewal model? All right, Johnny. Or Joni, excuse me, Joni. Apologize. Joni. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. okay. No problem. <laughs> Hey, is there is there a I know you probably said this, but I didn't write it down. Is there one place I can go at to look for the application? Because I have multiple community health workers, promotoras that have been working with us who meet the experienced criteria. But I would like to share more information with them as to how to apply. Um, I don't seem to have access to the chat box. So um, could that could that be given to me so that I can make sure that I can make that available to them? Absolutely. The, the application process has not begun yet for training programs or CHWPRs as of yet. That's not until early 2024, but oh. you can provide them with um, a you can provide them with the slide deck that shows the requirements so that they know what they'll need to gather for the application when it's open. Um, and that you said you don't have access to the chat at this time. No, I think it's because we use I, I'm with Dignity Health Northridge Hospital, and I think it's because we use um, Zoom and I have access to raising the hand, the microphones, the videos, but I can't find a chat box. OK, it's. I think um, if you have registered for this webinar, you will receive, you can receive um, the presentation materials will be sent out. Um, and then you can also access our HKI webpage. Okay. As and well. Then, and then one follow up, I was very excited to hear that you have some funding and you're uh, expecting to possibly get additional funding to offer scholarships. Will there be scholarship criteria and application process? And will that too be available early 2024 for those um, folks that are just getting started but really do want to um, take the standardized training and get the um, certificate? We will have a application process and criteria for that is not yet developed and in terms of a timeline on that Elia you were um if she's still here uh, you do you have a sense and timeline in terms of the potential funding for scholarships etc We don't have a timeline basically because we're working on all of this stuff right now. So we're prioritizing getting our application out for the um, program approvals at this moment. So um, so we are we'll we'll turn our attention to that and absolutely have some information, but we can't fund anybody until we approve those programs first. So 
Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Elia. All right. And the next question is uh, Andrea. Hello. Hi. Oh, okay, great. Hi. Uh, good <laughs> afternoon. Good, good afternoon. Now? Good evening. <laughs> Yeah, um, I just uh, thank you very much for hosting this session. Um, really exciting to make it to make it to this point after many listening sessions and in-person sessions and calls. Um, so appreciate us all for making it to this goal. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just wanted to. Um, oh yes, I want to echo. Yeah, if we cannot use Teams. Uh, it's a, I, I think it's a complicated uh, process and Zoom I think is more accessible for folks um, since we've all transitioned to uh, online um, process. Uh, my uh, main question I wanna ask is, um, you know, following up on the 15 million um, approved, will there be a stakeholder process to review the criteria of, the grants and stipends and you know what that application process is going to look like uh, making sure that chl eprs are weighing in on this process thank you for your question and we are we don't have that as elia stated we don't have that process in place yet we're really focusing right now on the approval of the training programs and making sure that the existing chwpr community knows how to access their the certificate um, but when we do reach that point we will um, we'll let folks know what we're what we're up to and and how they might be able to provide us with um if, with guidance information that um, they want to share with us on that topic okay so there will be a stakeholder process uh, in the next year or so on that. <laughs> trying to pin me down to a date. Um, <laughs> we're right now, we're focusing on the application process for the training programs and a certificate process for the existing CHWPRs. And we'll, we'll um, inform you all of what's happening with that phase when we get to that point. Okay. We've all been right. committed to stakeholder engagement process this whole time and we, we intend to continue that going forward with what wherever whatever avenues and, and ways we move uh, with this program we we're committed to stakeholder engagement going forward so okay. expect to hear yeah. more from us on that appreciate the stakeholder engagement would love to see just a chwpr led you know advisory committee because there's so many little details that i think you know i really appreciate the discretionary policy um you know you know having chwprs also be on involved in that would be great so but again, appreciate the stakeholder engagement and look forward to working with you all. Thank you. All right, thank you. And the next question from Rebecca Ryan. Thank you. Um, so many great comments, which make me uh, have more questions. I love Andrew's um, suggestion of having an advisory committee. I think having people from all state, you know, all kinds of stakeholders, I would love to volunteer, have people from my collaborative volunteer. Um, a question I have regarding the renewal model, because that's what's up on the screen now, is maybe kind of a suggestion, but also a question. Is there a way for training sites that are approved to give you like a batch Excel file of all the CHWs who did like a training that we hosted that you know meet the training or the renewal requirements i'm thinking like process for the uh, for each kind of like how nice it would be just to batch enter a bunch of names instead of getting like you know emails or having it come through individually um if that isn't done i'm just again asking well actually i'm asking if that's a process that can be done from training site to hki rather than have to be done just individually from chw to hki the process as it stands now, each individual need to self attest um, for the for the renewal, and I'm not sure that we would get at that with a bulk renewal process. But that's something we can take back and and consider um, how we can make that potentially work uh, for us. But thank you for that technical technical yeah. advice. Appreciate yeah. that. Work smarter, not that. harder, right? Work smarter, not harder. Yes. Thank you. Elia, was that you? It's Lindsay. Yes. Hey, I'm so hi, sorry. Uh, hi. Um, there's no there's no self no self attestation required for the renewal process. Sorry, I misspoke. So I just wanted to clarify. Thank you, Lindsay, from behind the curtain. 
<laughs> All right. Well, it looks like uh, we're ready to move on to the next section. Oh, yeah. Awesome. So we just have a little bit more uh, further to go with this presentation, and then we'll have another opportunity for Q&A. We're going to discuss the specialty model. The state issued specialty certificate. CHWPRs must meet requirements for the core state CHWPR certificate to secure a specialty certificate. CHWPRs must complete an HCI approved specialty training program. The programs may be offered by or in partnership with HCI approved core CHWPR training programs only. Specialty training programs will provide at least 10 hours of specialty training in addition to the 80, 80 training hours required for the core CHWPR certificate. Specialty curriculum that has been approved by experts within the specialty area, such as state department or other expert organization. Specialty training programs may be offered with the core CHWPR certificate training or as separate training units. Quick one, questions. All right, that was a quick one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and um, uh, first question is, I'm sorry if I, I get this name wrong, uh, Sarah Hai? Soto? Won't be the first or last to butcher uh -huh. my name, don't worry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I relate. You are okay. So I'm happy that this was kind of the last slide. I don't want to take a lot of time from everyone else. I might need someone's email so I can direct my question um, more clearly, but we are an agency that do bill Medi-Cal and we do have both the, um, the two pathways of of staff, the experience and the um, the ones that need to be trained. So how would we go about to kind of get all these folks certified versus having them go individually to different, you know, um, training areas? What would be the best um, advice that you can give me to so for, to get them to their certificate? Yes, yes. For the experienced folks, you would they would access through the experience pathway, um, like um, we explained, um, the application process for training programs is opening. We plan on improving training programs, uh, and then we'll have quite a hope hope to have quite a few options for training programs at the beginning of 2024. But also at the beginning of 2024, those experienced CHWPRs can begin applying for their certificate. And they would need to do that individually um, in terms of like a process for your um, for your organization. Maybe that's something that you all could set up for all of your experienced um, CHWPRs to have their, uh, their hours of, of experience um, certified and, and signed by you all to, to help them with that part of the process. In terms of the group that needs to be to go the training to take the training pathway um, at the beginning of 2024, you would have access to that list of uh, approved training programs that you could uh, then determine which one might be most appropriate for you to send a group of your um, your employees to to attend um, to attend that program. Those are those are the two ideas that I could come up with right at, off the top of my head. And those are the ideas that I had on the top of my head. I just wanted to make sure that I was <laughs> as anything or if I can, you know, would have any resource of a trainer that can, you know, train this. But I think the the how you said it is what my thought process was. So thank you for confirming this. I oh, no problem. <laughs> Great minds think alike, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm not that lost because believe it or not, this entire process, there's a lot of just the puzzle needs to be put together. So thank you so much yes. for, for making me feel totally. like I haven't lost it all. <laughs> oh, not at all. No, thank you for helping us and, and thank you for following this process. It is a lot uh, to untangle and, and that's why we're here. 
So take good care. Okay, thank you. And um, we are running out of time for today's uh, webinar, and we do have a few more slides to get through. We want to make sure that we get to the end to leave uh, time for questions. So we are going to move on to the next section right now, uh, and we will answer more questions at the end. Give me one quick second. Okay, my apologies. Next steps, we are we are getting down to the bottom. So right now we're at July 2023. Welcome. This year is going by super fast. So we have now released the requirements for our state CHWPR certificate per the statute deadline, which was July 1st. And now we're hosting these informational ses sessions on our final model. In fall 2023, the training programs will begin applying to become an HCI approved training program. In early 2024, CHWPRs can begin applying for state CHWPR certificates. And a future date to be determined, DHCS SPA pathways and the HCI certificate pathway will align into one state certificate process. And I think I would like to underscore, just take the liberty to underscore that the CHWPR uh, certificate, state certificate is not a requirement for CHW services, but it is for the purposes of billing Medi-Cal. And with that, is there another slide? Looks like there might be. That's the Q&A slide. All right, we're on the home stretch. Any other questions? All right, and one thing we are going to ask uh, as we go into the question and answer session uh, is if you have already asked questions uh, earlier in, in the uh, presentation, uh, we ask that uh, we give an opportunity for anybody who hasn't asked a question first, uh, and then um, we will get to, uh, to those that have already had a chance. So if there's anybody who hasn't asked a question, um, go ahead, this is uh, your chance. Um, And looks like uh, looks like we're just going to jump into to where we're at, and uh, we'll we'll go from there. Um, but uh, all right, so Rebecca, I know you see my name a lot. Absolutely, if anyone has a and question that's okay. for me, I knew exactly what you're thinking. I'm a teacher too, so I'm like, hey, hey, the one with the hand up, put it down for a second, guys. Uh, so I just wanted to share because I know we're kind of being like lost in the chat. Sarah from Chafee College also jumped in, so. For people like, um, I'm, I'm going to say it wrong, Sarahi as well, Soto, there are, like I represent um, 13 community colleges who actually work with employers on like creating a cohort for your employees to get trained. So there are like online only in-person hybrid options. I highly encourage those employers that are like, where do I find a training program? Obviously, HKI is the best. You're going to have a list, but if you're kind of wanting to get a jump start on that because that list won't come out until next year, I put my email in the chat. I can refer you to others to help. These do exist already. CCSF in San Francisco is like the Mecca. They work with different cohorts and they've been doing this for decades. So please reach out to us because I know HKI, you guys are going to be the spot pretty soon, but until then, we'll help you out. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Caroline. Thank you, thank you. Um, hi, so I had a question regarding the uh, specialty um, yes. certificate. So um, what happened or what about the people who are from the experience pathway? Like, how do we get the specialty um, certificate? You can receive a specialty certificate by um, completing a specialty training program. Like so, um, the third bullet point where it says separate training units. Is that the way we get? Yeah, you can you can complete it as a separate specialty training, you know, as 
just the 10 hours of specialty training instead of your your 80 hours of training. You could could just do the specialty training portion, that 10 hours. Oh, I see. And then um, is there a cost for the specialty training? We have we have not established costs for any of the training programs as a, at this time. OK, thank but, you. As was stated earlier, <laughs> similar. We're looking at ways in which we can keep the cost low. OK, thank you. You're welcome. All right, and uh, going back to uh, allowing uh, first time question answers uh, questions to uh, go, we're going to jump down to Shermena Davari. I said that correctly. Hi. Hello. Are you there, Shermena? Summer, we can't hear you if you're right. on mute. Oh, hello. Sorry. There she I thought I unmuted myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, apologies. Um, so I just wanted to first uh, say thank you for this wonderful webinar and this conversation. I also wanted to say that our organization, Reach Out, which we are located in Upland and uh, Hoopa Valley in Southern California, we also provide the CHW training. And I wanted to say that we completely align and match what the HCI and also uh, the state requires exactly the competencies that you all covered. So if, as you um, as well mentioned that in the future, uh, Eshkai will be one of the hubs as well in terms of providing that training. In the meantime as well, Reach Out will be more than happy to welcome and train any interested CHW, uh, future CHWs. And just I just also have a quick question. Uh, I don't want to take too much of the time. You said in the fall 2023, uh, you will provide the list of the trainers or training centers that you will um, kind of like accept and can refer people to. How do we uh, make sure that we can be on that list as an option for interested applicants? In fall 2023, we will uh, provide opportunities for training programs to to apply to be approved by HKI. In okay. yes. So and then those that list will be compiled and we plan to publish the list of the training programs that have been approved so far at the beginning of 2024. OK, sure. Great. And the requirements for that as well will be published at that time, right? Yeah. And the earlier session, we went into more detail about training programs specifically. So okay. um, if uh, you must have missed that one. So we would be happy yes. to provide you with a slide deck. Uh, for the requirements for the training pro programs, but that will also be, of course, a part of the application process. And um, I'm being asked if, if there are other training programs that are um, on the call and you'd like to share your uh, training program name and information, you can put it in the chat. And we'll make sure that you have uh, the information that you need in order to apply to be a, an approved training program. Sure. I uh, personally, I was not able to access the chat. It doesn't allow me to do that. It says you're not the member of the chat, so I'm not okay. sure. So I can reach out directly if, if that's okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. Thank you. Next question from Andrea Mackey. Hi. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Um, just to, I know Elia, you had answered it in the chat, but I think I'm still a little bit confused about this 80 hours. So you're for the ex legacy experience pathway. Um, are you requiring, you know, those 2000 hours to showcase, you know, how long your certificate training was, um, in the past few years? For the experience or pathway, we... I'm sorry, did I cut you off? Oh, no, no. Andrew, OK. For the experience pathway, we are requiring 2,000 hours with 500 of those hours verified. That there's no training component related to the experience pathway. OK, and you're not checking for like how long your certificate, your how long your training was back in the day? No, okay. we're only 
we're only checking for your experience. Your okay. experience as so a CHWPR. The, the um, when you were asking, you know, um, the training certificate program that has something less than 80 hours, that's just um, to prove for future programs then. Exactly. That's a requirement for the HCI approved training programs must provide at least 80 hours of tr of training, 10 of which are required to be um, uh, field training. So that's okay. for for programs that are applying to be approved. Yes. OK, I think I was getting confused. OK, thank you. No problem. All right, next question, uh, Maribel. Gracias, colegas. Um, I just want to say I appreciate all the thoughtfulness into setting the standards um, and, and going through this whole process. Colegas, I'd love for you to speak to your rationale as to um, why not just certify training entities, especially training entities that have been doing this work for many years. Um, why also certify CHWPRs when many of the training entities will already have their own certificates? And if CHWPRs have to be certified and charged, why are y'all going that next step to also certify CHWPRs when the trainings that you or the entities that you certify could just give their own certificates once you certify those training entities and avoid well, we having to charge CHWPRs twice? Well, we have not yet decided, or I see Elia popped up. We have not yet decided yeah. if, when or if we'll be charging CHWPRs for the certificate itself. Also, we have two pathways. There's an experience pathway and a training pathway. So um, the training path, the, uh, the experience or legacy pathway, CHWPRs would not be accessing a, a training program. They would be receiving certificates based on their experience. And, the, and then the only other reason that I would mention this is because um, we're also going to be giving a, a state issued unique identifier to the CW, CHWPRs that um, that apply for the state issued certificate so that that so that their um, certificate can go with them wherever they go, wherever they move. So Maribel, I actually think that's an interesting concept for us to think about in the future. But right now we need to have the experience pathway um, also. So. Um, but that is an interesting idea for us to consider down the line. Gracias, colegas. We'll talk. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Elia. Elia, um, might need. I have might have one more question for you. I'm looking in the chat. Go ahead, Chris. All right. And the next question is for Jerry. Thank you, everyone. Good afternoon. I hope you can hear me. I'm driving. Um, I have a question about slide 29. Uh, this is in regards to the very last, um, the very last activity in that timeline, which is uh, the two pathways uh, aligning. Could you speak a little bit more about what those two pathways are and how you envision those to be aligned, and of course how they will impact uh, statewide promotores? not just uh, those who are going to be employed in a Medi-Cal reimbursement um, entity. Well, I can take the last piece. Uh, certificates are only required for Medi-Cal, and so it wouldn't impact any CHWPRs that are not interested in accessing Medi-Cal. And I'll let Elia discuss um, how, how she um, and state envisions aligning the the pathway that DHCS has in place along with our HCI certificate pathway. So, and, and um, really, this is this is something that we are in ongoing conversations with our friends at DHCS. Um, what we've committed to do is to ensure that any um, CHW that is currently billing Medi-Cal and that's currently working in the Medi-Cal space, we are committing to try to figure out how to make sure, make absolutely sure that all of those community health workers are transitioned into the state issued certificate so that we can ensure that they continue to provide um, Medi-Cal billable services. So really that's what this alignment means is we're, it really is focused on 
the Medi-Cal space and us making sure that all of the promotoras that are currently or all the community health workers that are currently billing Medi-Cal continue to have the, the um, ability to do that. Thank you, Elia, for your uh, for your uh, response. Thank you both. And one one final question. I know that you mentioned the slide decks are available. Uh, will recordings of these um, of these informative sessions be available? Are we planning to make the recording available? Yeah, I can answer that one. Uh, yes, um, we will be uh, posting uh, recordings seven to ten days after um it takes time to for us to transcribe and and get them ada compliance so uh we will be posting those wonderful thank you very much thank you have a good night all right and i see caroline uh, you have a question hi so i had a question regarding because like the cert uh, to apply for the certificate is all the way um in 2024 and then because I'm from like the experience pathway um, and it says like uh, having the supervisor um, sign it, what happens if that supervisor is no longer in that role uh, because it's from a past previous job? So your supervisor from a previous job would be the person that you would want to, you wouldn't have access to them to sign to verify your 500 hours? Because I would like her, uh, the supervisor, to sign it, but what would happen all the way, like, in the future, which is 2024, to apply for this certificate? What if um, my supervisor is no longer with that that organization? I think that's something that we would have to address on that case-by-case -case discretionary basis um, to figure out who would be the most appropriate, who could um, who could authorize or, or attest to your, your 500 hours of work. I'm assuming you might have some other uh, ways in which you could um, have, provide verification of those 500 hours. Okay, because like uh, for, I guess I'll email it because it's a little more um, complex like the. Okay. Okay, thank you. No problem. We're happy to, to take a look at that and see if we can get you a more specific answer based on your uh, situation. All right. Are there any other questions out there? Uh, I I actually have a question. Can you hear me? This yes. Adrian, yes. loud and clear. So I have a similar challenge as as my supervisor died, and um, but I have a letter of recommendation. But you know, I was a promotor in in nineteen ninety seven. So um the the but I have like a letter of recommendation. I'm wondering if maybe a, a, the letter would work for me and also that the person that just spoke. I think again, those are going to be um, those cases that we have to look at individually and and uh, make decisions based on on the the conversation and the and the information documentation that you all have that we can take a look at that. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Oh, I had thank a, you. I had a quick oh. question. Oh, is that? Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, I just saw the slide. That is the email address. Thank you. Oh, no worries. Thank you. All right. And Carol, you have a question? I, I do. It's really more about process. And I know that some of this is still to come to be decided, but wondering um, uh, imagining that there is there could be a bottleneck, uh, especially January 2024, or maybe for that first six months. Does HKI have the money to staff a kind of bigger pool of individuals that can be doing these reviews? Um, initially, um, you know, as we onboard the legacy pathway especially, it seems like there'll be a lot of documentation and a lot of checking and reviewing. So just wondering if uh, if that is HK is planning. Yes. Yes, HK is planning for that. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you, Carol. Are there any other questions out there? I see, I see our chat has slowed down as well. Hmm. 
All right. Well, if there are no other well, questions. Here we go. Yeah. Jelana, do you have Just any? Just a few uh, minutes last... over. Yeah. Jelana, this has do you been have a pleasure. It's it's been fantastic working um, alongside Elia, Patrick, and and Lindsay, and 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 others from HKI on this project. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, what's to come. I thank you, everyone, for all of your feedback. And and I know there's concern about ongoing stakeholder feedback. And and you must know that we are committed to continuing that engagement. And thank you for participating. All right, thank you, Jolanda, and great job tonight. We appreciate everybody joining us this evening to learn more about the Community Health Worker Promotoras and Representative Certificate process. We're excited to be able to offer it as a new program to expand and train California's health workforce and are grateful for your participation with us tonight. As we've discussed earlier, this screen that we have up right now provides some of the links in the email uh, that are available. You can find these slides on our website. We also have other information there, so we encourage you to go to the website to see all of the available resources uh, that we have for this subject. You're always welcome to email us at chw at hki.ca.gov with any additional questions or comments. Thank you so much for attending tonight. And with that, we conclude this evening's webinar. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, Thank you again, for being such an amazing moderator, facilitator. Appreciate your, your help here. Good night, right. everyone. Job, team. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.